Welcome. In this video, we will review some math concepts, talk about units and some algebraic techniques, as well as graphing principles and how they are used. Throughout your radiology studies, there will be some mathematics that will be involved. This will help to develop a more complete understanding of the topic studied. This lesson will be a review of some of the concepts that will be utilized. So we'll start with fractions. A fraction can be thought of, of as the amount of a whole. Um, it is written as a number over a number. Okay, so like two over three. Um, two in this case is called referred to as the numerator and three is the denominator. The fraction two thirds is two parts of a three part matter. Fractions can be reduced for ease of use. So four six, uh, the top and bottom can both be divided by two. And so the two six can become the two thirds. So two thirds and four six are uh, equal to each other. The reciprocal or inverse of a fraction is flipping the numerator and the denominator. So an example of the two thirds, the reciprocal is three halves. Um, this is also the inverse. Uh, converting fractions to decimals and percentages. Um, so we divide the number the numerator by the denominator to convert to a decimal. So the fraction four fifths would equal five divided by four. Okay, so we would just do it out like this. This is a, actually a square root symbol, but just imagine it's the uh, the, the divisor, the, the dividing symbol. Okay, um, and this becomes zero point eight. So the fraction four fifths as a decimal is 0 0.8 or eight tenths is the decimal. A percentage uh, means that means of a hundred. So 15% is 15 divided by a hundred and that as a decimal is 0 0.15. Uh, to find 15% of a number, let's say, so we wanna find um, a percentage of a number, okay? We merely just multiply uh, the number by the percent. So if we set up the equation, this would be 15% times 40. Um, we haven't quite discussed how to do that next. Well, let's look at the next slide. So multiplication by fractions. When we multiply two fractions, multiply both the numerators together. Place the result in the answer's numerator. Then multiply both the denominators together. Place the result in the answer's denominator. So we just kind of multiply straight across when we have two fractions. So we can take a look at that. An example is one third times four fifths. Okay, so we take the numerators, multiply the numerators together. So one times four equals four. So we put that in the numerator of the answer here. Then we multiply the denominator. So three times five equals 15. And so we get the answer of four fifteenths. So one third times four fifths equals four fifteenths. So now we can go back to our uh, equation or our what we were trying to find on the last page. So 15% of 40 is 15% uh, times 40. And we just multiply the numerators together. So 15 times 40 is 600. Um, if there's no, if it's a whole number like this, it's on a fraction, it's always over one. So anything um, divided by one is itself. Okay, so 40 divided by one is itself. So we can pretend kind of that we're just multiplying 100 times one and we just bring the 100 over. So we get this, which is 600 over 100. As we know, we can reduce, so we can multi we can um, divide both by 100. 
Okay, so we can take 100 off of here, which just drops the these, and then we have 6 over 1, which we just learned with the 40 over 1 is just 6. So the answer is going to be 6. So 15% of 40 is 6. Um, division with fractions. So we can multiply with fractions together. We can also divide fractions together. Uh, dividing fractions can be written as uh, 1 third divided by 4 fifths. What we did on the last... Uh, and the fractions we used on the last slide. Um, it can also be written like this. This is a when it we have multiple kinds of fractions and there's other variables here. This can be a more um, obvious way, I will say, uh, a better way to write it. Uh, fractions over fractions, or even a fraction over just whole numbers and other variables. Um, this can be misinterpreted. So when dividing fractions, we take the reciprocal of the second or the bottom fraction. Okay, so we know how to take the reciprocal, right? We just flip these, we just flip the denominator and numerator, and we do it of the second value here, okay, in this uh, equation, or we do it of the bottom fraction. Okay, we take the reciprocal, then we multiply, and we just learned how to multiply on the last slide. So let's see that in action. So one third divided by four-fifths equals one-third. We take the reciprocal and we multiply it. So we take the reciprocal, we multiply it together, and we just and we know we just multiply it straight across. One times five, three times four. So it's five-twelfths. Okay. Um, so on the last slide, the answer was four-fifteenths. Right? Now we got five-twelfths. So it's actually larger um, when we're dividing two fractions together like this, okay? And it, it depends how it's going, but in this case, it happens to be a larger value, okay? 5 twelfths is larger than 4 fifteenths. Um, fractions addition and subtraction. So it's fairly interesting that we talked about um, multiplication and division of fractions first. Um, when, you know, um, coming up in school and everything, you would, you you know, you learned addition and subtraction first uh, with just, uh, you know, just typical numbers. Um, that's because fractions, uh, adding and subtracting fractions is actually more complicated than uh, just adding and subtracting like whole numbers, okay? Um, and multiplication division is easier. I guess multiplication actually would be the easiest, right, um, from what we saw. So fractions can be added and subtracted. Um, a common denominator must be found. So the denominator is the bottom value. Remember this. This can be done by multiplying the denominators together. To keep the math accurate, the numerators must also be multiplied by the same number Okay, that we're multiplying the, denom the denominators with. All right. um, so the example again, we'll add one third and a four fifths together. Um, so we have this equation here, all right? Um, so in order to do this, we need to find a common denominator. So we'll multiply the denominator of this one, um, the denominator, well, what the denominator value is here, we'll multiply this fraction by this. And when we multiply, um, and we're not changing the equation in any way, okay? Um, other than it's making it more workable for us to see, okay? Because when we multiply um, two uh, numbers that are the same, um, a fraction that has the same numerator and denominator, it just equals one. So we'll just multiply them by one. So one third times one would be one third, and this would be that, and that would be the same equation, okay? Even though we're going to make it something different, um, we're not actually changing anything with the outcome, okay, or with the values actually are okay um, so when we um, when we take this denominator and we multiply this fraction by it and then we take this denominator and we multiply this fraction by it and that's the easiest way to find the, the uh, common denominator it might not be the least common denominator but it's going to be um, the quickest way just to find um, a common denominator okay so we do 5 times 5 here, okay, and we know how to multiply. We multiply straight across, and we get 5 fifteenths, and we do the same here. We take the 3, and we 
we um, make a fraction here, 3 over 3, and we multiply this one by it, okay? And we just multiply straight across, so we get 12, and we get 15. See, now we have a common denominator. Both are 15. Then we just add the tops together, okay? We just add the numerators together. 5 plus 12 equals 17, and we just keep the bottom the same. And then we get the answer. So um, 5 15 plus 12 15 equals 17 15. So this fraction here, 1 3rd plus 4 fifths equals 17 15. Okay. We see it there again. Um, subtraction is the same process. Okay. So subtraction is the um, is exactly the same. So if we have these two values, okay, we need to find common denominators. Okay, so we do the same thing as we did up here, and we get the 5 fifteenths, but this time it's minus the 12 fifteenths. Okay, and then we just do the same thing. Instead of adding these two numbers, we subtract them, and 5 minus 12 is negative 7 fifteenths. Okay, so, um, so we get a negative value of this because 4 fifths is larger, and we're subtracting it from a number, so it should be a negative value. Um, fractions are equal to each other. So this will come up um, f fairly often in radiology because we're, we're going to be comparing several ratio of things. You know, we want to find out uh, when when two parameters are one way, okay, and we we keep one parameter the same, but we but we're changing one, okay. What's the other value going to be, okay? So typically we are um, when this happens, we're going to be setting up some kind of um, equation of fractions, okay, where there's a, <clears throat> where there's a fraction and equals, then another fraction, and there may be other multiples in there and other kind of things, um, but all the processes we already learned are going to be the same, so let's see how we work with that, okay? When fractions are equal to each other, a process called cross-multiplying is performed. Uh, the numerator of one fraction, so the top of one fraction, is going to be multiplied with the denominator of the other fraction. Okay, and then it's going to be the same. Okay, so the numerator of the other of the other fraction is going to be multiplied by the denominator of uh, of the first fraction. You know, so let's see that in action. So we have just a uh, generic <clears throat> values here. Okay, and variables like a uh, a divided by b equals c divided by d, okay? So we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply the a times the b, and then we're going to multiply the b times the c. So that's why it's like cross multiply, okay? And we're just going to set those equal. So we multiply uh, the numerator a times the denominator d. So we multiply this uh, these together, and we multiply the numerator c by the denominator b, okay? And we, then we get this equation. So I have a times d equals c times b. Um, and then if we had values for these other ones, we could solve. If we didn't, if we don't have values, you know, we can um, we can find out what we need to find out from this, okay, and, and get the answer that we're seeking. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead now, and we'll explore exponentials. All right. So we start with fractions, um, and then we know how to work those. We know how to add them, subtract them divide them, find percentages, and um, also when they're set equal to each other. Okay, so now let's talk about exponentials. An exponential is just a way of expressing how many times to multiply a number by itself. The number being multiplied is the base, which is just designated B in, a, in the generic uh, form, and the number of times it's multiplied is its power, P. It is written as b to the power of p. Okay, so it's written like this. There's this is like a superscript where the p's up here. Okay. Um, let's do see an example. Okay, so we'll see two to the power of four is the way this is said. Okay, so two to the power of four um, or two to the fourth power. It can also be stated as so. S is going to equal, as we learned up here, how many times to multiply the number by itself. So we're going to multiply 2 
times 2, times 2, times 2, 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. When we do that, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Okay, so 2 multiplied 4 times is 16, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. If it was 2 to the power of 5, we would just have, we would just multiply it one more time, so we would have 32, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, there's some rules, exponential rules that we need to, uh, that will be useful to know, okay? So, when the bases of two exponentials are the same, they can be, can be combined in different ways, okay? So, when the bases are the same, they can be combined in different ways. If the bases aren't the same, um, these these rules don't necessarily apply. Okay. When multiplying exponentials, the powers are added together, and when dividing, they are subtracted. Okay. So when multiplying exponentials, when the bases are the same, the powers, okay, are added together. So let's take a quick look at that. So we have x to the fourth times x to the fifth. Okay, so the bases are the same. It's an x, x, whatever that value happens to be. Just a generic, uh, any kind of value, right? Um, x to the fourth times x to the fifth would just equal x, and then we add 4 plus 5 in the um, power, in the exponential, and then we have x to the 9. So <clears throat> this expression right here equals x to the 9. When we're dividing, okay, it says when dividing, they are subtracted, okay, and they're subtracted in this fashion. The numerator, which is y to the 7, is subtracted, uh, which the power 7 is subtracted from the denominator, which the power is 4. These are both y, the bases are the same, so we can use this rule. So y equals 7 minus 4, which is this y to the 3rd. Okay. Note that when the exponential is in the denominator, it's the same as the power being the opposite sign in the numerator. Okay. So, um, and vice versa. So, um, we'll, we'll, we'll explore that again in a couple slides here. But the um, this y to the four. Okay. This would be like adding. Okay, adding the negative four. Okay, so if we were just doing this, it would be like adding a negative 4, which is just like subtracting 4. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll explore that again, like I said. Oh, well, here we go. So um, uh, z to the 4th and then z to the 2nd equals um, z to the 4th times z to the negative 2. Okay, and we learned right up here that when they're multiplied, it's just like adding. Okay, so this would be z to the 4 plus a negative 2, which is the same as subtracting 2, okay, so this expression is going to be z to the second is going to be the answer to this, so this would equal z to the second power, z uh, 2 to the power 2, okay. So we'll continue with some exponential rules, so when an exponential is raised by another power, the powers are multiplied together, okay. So a to the fourth raised to the third power. Okay, so according to the rule here, we're just going to multiply the powers together. Okay, so we multiply the four and the three together, and we get this right here, and that's going to equal a to the twelfth power. So this equals a to the twelfth power. Okay, you can we can write it that way too. When there are multiple different bases. Okay, the powers are distributed. All right, so this this base is just a. Let's look at when there's multiple bases. So when there's a times b to the six. Okay, this is the same as writing a to the six, b to the six. Okay, so we just distribute this power to the six. Okay, we, or we could keep it in this form. It might be it might be better to keep it in this form than to than to change it to this. Okay. It all depends what we're trying to what we're trying to do, right? But but uh, but this rule right here might be might be the better way to go. Okay, depending on on uh, what's presented. So when a fraction is raised to a power, the same rule. Okay, 
So when a fraction is raised to a power, like we have a divided by b, okay, we're just going to use the same rule and we're going to distribute. So we just distribute the, um, the square or to the second power, okay, to the a and the b. So this is the same as this, all right. If you put this in, make sure with parentheses and you raise, and you raise it to the second power in your calculator and you put values in here, it's going to equal if you do this, all right. I stated before, when a number is raised to a negative power, it's the same as the opposite sign in the denominator of the fraction, okay? So here's, again, so a to the negative 7, okay, is the same as 1 over a to the 7th, okay? Notice that this is positive 7th, okay? And uh, so this is negative 7. So sometimes this can be useful, okay? And we can bring this up to the top if we need to, okay? And that can help us solve the equation or uh, simplify things, right? Now we'll go ahead and we'll dive into uh, logarithmic. So logarithmic is kind of like a, uh, a scary term, but it comes up um, in certain aspects like um, in biology and nature, okay? A lot of things work logarithmically. And then um, it's kind of just the opposite of exponentials, okay, and we'll see, is that can be performed on numbers just like addition or subtraction, okay, so it's just an operation that can be performed on numbers. Uh, the log is the inverse of the exponential, as I mentioned, the relationship is summed up below. So, um, log to the b, okay, the log, and this is a base b, okay, is what we say, um, the, uh, the value y that we're doing to the log of base b will equal p, okay? And if we just go back to the exponentials, b is the base, okay? So that's this, the same b. p is the power, okay? And then y, okay? So if we took, if we took, the, uh, if we took the log of this, we could rewrite this, okay? And we can go back and forth here. So it's, it's kind of the opposite, okay? So if we needed to find this value or isolate this value here, we can do that, okay, if we had these two values. So that can be very useful. When a log base isn't specified, okay, it's assumed it's 10. So the default value of the base is 10. Um, okay, this whole page coming up, that's fine. Uh, there are rules of logs that can be important in solving equations, okay? So um, I'm not going to go through all these rules here, all right? Um, but we can see that if we have two different values, like m times n, okay, even if we had 10, we could split this up to 2 times 5, okay, we could split that up, and then we could rewrite it like this, okay, and that may be useful at some time, so we just take the two values, it's the same as adding, okay, and if we have this, uh, if we are presented something like this, okay, we can go back this way, okay, so these, all these things work both ways, all right, and we kind of, um, and we already talked about like the basic um, b, um, the base to the power of p, okay, kind of thing, okay, will equal, all right, but this is another way of rewriting it. So if we have um, m to a certain power, okay, so we had like an 8 here that can be re rewritten as 2 to the power of 3, okay, and maybe what we're doing that's that's useful to do, okay. So then this would be, so then we could rewrite it here, this would become 3. We could have the 2 here, and depending on what log base this is, this may be very easy to solve with the 2 here, then, okay? And then we just multiply it by the 3 that's here, all right? So um, so these rules here can be useful uh, for sol solving logarithms, okay? When the log is to the base of E, okay? So E is a value, it's called Euler's number, it's 2.27, um, roughly. Okay, it, it's a, a, a transcendental number, so there is no, it can't be written any other way, all right? It can't be written as a fraction or a, a combination of fractions or uh, square roots, all right? So it's a transcendental number. So it um, uh, it is roughly equal to 2.72, okay? It is referred to as a natural log, okay? And we can rewrite instead of doing log and then an E, here, okay, Euler's number, it can just be written ln, which means like natural log, 
okay? Um, and this is seen in many natural events. It has, it can, has to do with trees, has to do with growth of the populations. Um, it's um, so 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 it comes up and it can um, it comes up in radio bio um, at times too. Okay. Um, so let's so we talked about um, fractions, how to deal with those. We talked about the exponentials. We talked about logarithms. Okay. So now let's just uh, see about scientific notation. So scientific notation is going to be used. Okay. If we if you watch the uh, on the first video, we talked about how it's difficult to see very small, very large values, okay, and compare them together. Um, so we use scientific notation. Um, it's, a, it's a standard for displaying small or large numbers in an easy to read and understand format. It's written as a single digit number and with or without a decimal, okay, and other values uh, behind it, and, and it's multiplied. Um, by a power of 10, okay? And it's multiplied by a power of 10. Okay, so let's see how that looks here. So an example of it, just an easy example, would be like three times 10 to the power of two, okay? 6.643 times 10 to the power of four. It could be written like this, 5.23 times 10 to the power of three. So all this is uh, scientific notation, okay? It's always times 10 and it's to this. Uh, Okay, the power of the exponential determines how much the decimal is moved to the right, and is the power and to the right if the power is positive or left if the power is negative. All right, this makes sense as 10 to the power of 2 is 10 times 10, which is 100. Okay, therefore 3 times 100 is 300. All right, so moving the decimal, you know. Um, two places to the right. Okay, so if the decimal is here, we're moving it one, two to the right, and then we just fill in a zero and a zero. Okay, so then it becomes 300. All right. Um, so we'll take a look at the other ones here. Okay, so this is to the power of four. So one, two, three, four, and we had a zero, and we get this 66,000. Okay, and this would be like multiplying uh, this value here times 10,000. Okay. Um, and this uh, this number up here, okay, it's the same as moving it to the left. So one, two, three, okay. It's the same as multiplying it by like a thousandth, okay, it's because this would equal a thousandth to the negative three, one over a thousand, okay, because we already learned about reciprocals. <clears throat> so this would move the decimal point over three, okay. So we would get this decimal here, okay. It's another way of writing it. <clears throat> now. If this is uh, times 10 to the negative 15, let's say, writing it as a decimal is very difficult, okay? So the best way in the way that it's going to be represented, okay, at, um, is that it's going to be represented in scientific notation like this, okay? Because this can be easily worked with, with the rules we already learned before, and um, and it won't and you won't miss a zero in here, okay? Which would completely, you know, change your calculations, okay? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and we'll move to units. All right. So there's certain um, the units is just like the um, is is what we're working with. Okay. Um, when we're talking about a number. Okay. So if we just give a number, like we give 14. Okay. That doesn't describe very much. It could be 14 feet. All right, um, it could, which meters would be better right, for a standard unit, but it could be uh, 14 bananas, okay? So it says, um, so so th the unit attached is important. So let's look at some just standard, which is, uh, which is the international system of units, okay? It's international system, it's SI, even though that doesn't work with English, okay? Because, um, the SI, what it stands for, actually is in English, but to us, it's International System of Units, okay? Um, so the measurement, as we mentioned, like length is a meter, time is second, uh, amount of a substance we won't really deal with, but it's a mole, uh, electric current, the amp, which uh, we will deal with directly, um, 
uh, mass, the standard kilogram. Okay. Uh, the so from those we can derive units. Okay. One right at the top that we see that we discussed um, in in the last video, video two in the first video is frequency, right? So frequency is is the symbols hertz, and that's just what s to the negative one, which is one over s, right? It's one over seconds, okay? Um, and some other things can be derived, right? Like force, pressure, energy, okay, power, which is like the law, which is like joule seconds, okay? Um, and uh, other things and we see that the Newton here is this big N okay and that's minute then it goes back to the SI units right it goes back to meters kilograms seconds over seconds uh, to the second right seconds per second second right okay we would say per second second okay um, and that's the measurement of a Newton okay and now in pressure we're using that Newton value okay so all these values are in there all right Okay, in this right here, the same here, Newton's there again, joules, that's a joule, a joule involves Newton, right, so these are like derived units, okay, we're going back to the base, okay, or uh, the base units, all right, we're, we're using those um, to find um, certain measurements, right, and then we can use even those that we found, again, Watts is right there. There's watts is joule seconds, which is which joule is newtons, which a newton is this. Okay, so it becomes um, it becomes kind of convoluted what things actually are, but some of these things we understand. Like we, we kind of have a, a understanding of watts to some degree, right? You have an understanding of not necessarily Celsius, but Fahrenheit, right? Okay, and this is a derived unit from Kelvin, which is the um, standard of temperature okay um, so we'll talk about the um, this is like would be like the degree of magnitude right might be a thing um, the standard like uh, prefixes that are given to certain values okay so um, so we'll just start here in the middle okay so um, the 10 to the 0, so we didn't discuss, but anything to the 0 is 1, okay? Um, so any value to the 0 is 1. So the uh, factor, anything, and this is what it's being multiplied by, so anything multiplied by 1 is just itself, so there is no special prefix or symbol, all right? Um, a kilo is to the 3, which is like a 1,000. Mega is a million. Okay, so this is we ten six times ten times ten times ten six times, which comes out to a million. Okay, uh, giga terabyte or tera, we see terabyte or tera we see here a big T. Okay, and note the big M and the little M. Okay, so this can make a big difference when you're if we're if we're talking about things right. We're going a swing of like a billion. Okay, um, from here to here. All right, so milli, cena, micro which is mu, this is mu is the symbol for it, okay, nano, and uh, picto, and then beyond that it's like femto, and uh, it goes on and on, okay, but uh, 10 to the 12, okay, it becomes very small, and typically if we're talking about like actual, um, actual things, you know, and we're expressing it in this way, right, we're talking about mega, mega volts, all right, okay, or megahertz, right when it gets uh, much beyond this we don't typically use the prefix okay um it can be it keeps it keeps going the whole thing but we typically don't use the prefixes um past these points okay so um so it's so it's important just to kind of know those okay because if it's just given in megahertz and it doesn't give you times 10 10 to the 6 um then if you know that you know, you can easily move on, right? Um, let's go ahead and talk about algebra now, okay? So we talked about just some rules of, um, some basic mathematical rules, okay, that um, can be useful. 
Okay, so now we'll talk about just some algebra, okay? In solving equations, it is typically necessary to isolate a variable. So algebra is pretty much just isolating a variable, okay, of some sort, all right? Um, in order to accomplish this, the opposite operation needs to be performed on all the other numbers or variables on the side. That the, that the desired variable is on um, until the variable is isolated. The same operations need to be performed on the other side as well. So if we add 3 to one side, because that's what we're doing, we need to add 3 to the other side of the equation. Okay, um, Because then we're not changing the relationship between the two. Okay, um, When they're equals, it means that both sides are the same amount. There may be a variable that we don't know, you know what its value is Okay, that we need to find. Um, but if we change one side, we need to change the other side. They're still going to be equal, okay? Um, so that's um, an important thing of algebra. The way this is done is by using both rigorous rules and some artistic creativity, we'll call it, okay? Not all possible scenarios can be described here, but we'll cover um, just some common things that may come up, okay? Um, working with equations over time, this artistic creativity, okay, comes up. All right. There's some rules. You know, one rule we already discussed here is that if we do an operation on one side, we need to do the same on the other side. So that's uh, that's the, the rule that always needs to be followed. Right. Um, and just through working with uh, working with equations a bit. OK, this starts to come out. All right. And you'll start to develop some some ways of uh, going about it, you know, and looking at the equation in a way that will make it possibly easier to solve, okay? Um, so algebra, if the variable that is to be isolated is being added by another number, okay, subtract that number from both sides. So we're doing the opposite operation, okay? So if we, you know, if it's being added by three, we need to subtract three. So the opposite of adding is like subtracting, right? The opposite of multiplying is dividing, okay? The opposite of an exponential is a logarithmic, all right? We, we just uh, explored that, all right? So, um, so we need to do the opposite. So a quick example is five equals x plus three. So we subtract three from both sides. All right, so we subtract five minus the three. So we just subtract three and then we do x plus three. Okay, and we subtract the three. So that becomes two equals x. So here five minus three is two. Um, the plus three and the minus three equal zero nothing so we're adding nothing here okay and that just is x itself so we get x by itself okay if the variable that is being isolated is being subtracted by another number add that number to both sides okay so we have the same thing but now we're subtracting the three we're going to add the three on both sides we add the three here we add the three here we get the x by itself, and now we have 8 equals x. If the variable that is being isolated is being multiplied by another number, we divide the number from both sides, okay? So we have um, the same setup here, but instead of we have the x, and instead of adding and subtracting, we're now we're multiplying by a 3. So we need to divide a 3, okay? So we see here we have the 5, we're dividing by 3, uh, equals x, okay? And we need to divide these threes out, okay? This becomes 1, as we learned before. And anything multiplied by 1 is just itself, so we just get the x by itself. So now we have 5 thirds equals x, okay? So if we put 5 thirds in here, and we multiply the 5 times the 3, we get 15. And then 3 times 1, we get 3. So 15 divided by 3, if we reduce that, would equal 5, okay? So a way to check yourself is you can take the answer and you can plug it back in the original equation. 2 plus 3 is 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. Okay. And that's a way to check that if you did it, if you, uh, did it correctly. Okay. Um, if the variable that is to be isolated is being divided by another number, multiply that number from both sides. Okay. So the same with like dividing, we're going to multiply. So now we have 5 equals x divided by 3. All right, so we're going to multiply 3 on both sides. All right, so we multiply the 3 here, 5 times 3, okay, which is going to be 15, 
and we multiply the 3 here, um, it's the same as putting the 3 on in the numerator here, okay? And we know that 3 over 3, okay, it is going to become 1, and anything times itself is x, so we get the x by itself. So we find out that x is 15, we can plug it back in here, just like we discussed up here, it's 15 thirds, it's 5, right? Um, so that's always a way you can check yourself, is to go back and plug in the... Um, the value you got back into the equation, okay? If the variable that is to be isolated is being raised by an exponential, use the change of base law, okay? So we have um, x to the fourth, or, or four to the power of x equals 64, okay? So this is pretty complicated on the surface, but we learned that the opposite is the base, okay? And we learned what that, what that uh, law, what that rule was, right? Use the log rule. So the 4 becomes log base of 4 to 64, okay, equals x. So if we solve this right here, we can get our answer for x, okay, that we need. Um, in order to solve this, to put it in your calculator, okay, because most calculators you can't really change the base here um, easily. Um, more sophisticated uh, 89s and 92s or uh, 93 models of the TI um, allow you to do that, but most don't. So um, you're going to have to put this in like this, okay? So you may need to use this rule of logs, okay, where you log of this number here that the log is being taken of, okay? So 64 goes in the numerator divided by the log of the 4 in the denominator, okay? And when if you put this in your calculator, all right, um, it equals 3. Okay, and this log becomes the log of base 10, all right? So this this expression right here, log of base 4, 64, equals this right here, okay? We can do this right here. And it equals 3, um, and that equals the x that we were trying to find. So if we do 4 times 4 times 4, we get the answer 64, okay? 4 to the third power is 64. Um, with this, it's important to mind on how to perform... Um, um, with these ideas in mind, the order of operations to perform um, is important. So typically, like the PDMAS you might have learned, um, which is the parentheses, exponentials, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, is the typical course of action when you're solving um, a normal equation. Okay, um, uh, but for for doing the algebraic ste steps, it will often be reversed. Okay, depending on how it is. So this is where some of the artistic um, comes in, okay, where um, sometimes it's better just to solve the equation, okay, beyond this, uh, solving parts of the equation first, okay, by using these steps will make it easier to continue, okay, or reducing or changing the form of one side or both sides of the equation may be useful, okay, um, so um, just working with uh, equations over time, you know, and uh, practicing a few and stuff, you'll kind of, you'll kind of, we'll kind of see um, how um, sometimes doing these steps is first, okay, and sometimes just going right at it and just doing the inverse operations on both sides is the easiest way, okay, to start. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes you may need to do the um, operations, um, you do the inverse operations on both sides, then you solve a part of the equation, okay, so it's, um, so there's a little bit of, um, like I said, our artistic creativity when uh, solving uh, equations sometimes, but in, in radiology it doesn't really um, get too, um, too involved typically, okay, so we want to solve this 3, okay, it's being multiplied by this whole expression x plus 3 so this so 3 is being multiplied by this whole expression and that equals 24 so we want to find what the x value might be okay first we can divide both sides by 3 okay so we're going to divide by 3 these 3's are going to become 1 anything multiplied by itself it's just going to become itself okay so the x plus 6 is going to continue on uh, we divide these two okay and when we <clears throat> take 24 we divide it by 3 we get an 8 okay and now it's very simple. We just subtract 6 from both sides. We subtract the 6, okay? And we get 8 minus 6, and we get the 2, okay? Um, here, all right? We want to solve this 
equation here, okay, it equals 28, negative 28, we say, all right, so this is uh, slightly more complicated, we want to solve for the A, okay, the A is what we don't know, um, here, first, solving the numerator might be the easiest way to go, okay, so solving this value here might be the easiest way to continue to begin with, all right, um, so we subtract these two values, we get the negative 16, we multiply it by 7, we get negative 112, Okay, not, so we've uh, we've simplified the look of the expression, right? Um, so in order to solve, we're going to multiply both sides by a to the second. And we multiply by a to the second here, in red, and uh, and in red here, multiply by a to the second. Uh, anything even a to the second, uh, and when it's being divided. Uh, when a to the second is being divided here by itself, it just becomes 1, and anything times 1 um, becomes itself. So negative 112 goes over here, and then this value sticks. Okay, So now we have a to the second, and it's in a more usable, we would say, right, a more usable form. So this should be relatively straightforward. This is being multiplied together, so we need to divide here. Okay, so we divide both sides by the negative 28, we divide by the negative 28, um, the negative is out here, okay, but we divide by the negative 28, negative times negative becomes positive, um, <clears throat> the same here, negative times negative becomes positive, so, um, so we just get a positive a to the fourth, I mean a to the second, okay, um, these two values conveniently become a, a four, uh, 112 and 28, you, know, you don't really think of that, but hey, it's a 4. So um, so we have 4 equals a to the second, okay? So uh, we need to do the opposite expression, okay? And that's taking what's called the square root, okay? So we'll take the square root here, okay? Um, on both sides. So we'll take the square root of the 4, we'll take the square root here. This um, becomes 2, okay? Um, so the square root of 4 is 2, and the, this, um, the square root undoes the uh, exponential value, okay? If this was a to the third, we could take the third root, so there would be a little 3 here. If this was to the fourth, we could take the fourth root, but we would also have to take the fourth root of this, okay? Um, but in this case, it's just to the second power, so we only have to take just the square, like to the second powers here. Okay, and it just becomes a equals two. So in this um, in this original, if we put a two here, in the original equation, if we put a two here, it's going to equal negative twenty eight. We say right. Um, it can also equal a negative two in this in this case. When you take the square root of things, it can also be the negative. But we're just going to, um, for simplicity, we're going to say that it just equals two here. Okay. Um, so algebra and system of equations all right so we saw how we deal with some exponentials how we deal with division how we deal with multiplication okay very, in very basic ways now we can go ahead and we can do um algebra systems of equations all right and that computer all right and so an algebra system of equations a system of linear equations um, comprises two or more equations that relate to each other. Okay. And I don't think it has to be like termed a linear equations, but, uh, but, but maybe that's the complete term. So in order to solve, there must be at least as many equations as there are variables. So if we have two variables we're trying to solve, okay, that two unknowns, we have to have two equations to represent those, all right, in the system of equations. If we have four variables, we need four equations, okay? We can't solve a system of equations if the um, number of variables is greater, than, is greater than the number of equations we have, okay? This can be a useful tool for solving problems. Uh, to solve, find what one variable equals, okay? So we need to... We need to deal with one equation, all right, in the system of linear equations. We need to find what one variable equals. Then we can plug that solution to that one variable back into the uh, other variable. 
then substitute or plug into the original equation. In waves, the equation um, E, which is the energy, equals H, which is Planck's constant, times F. In V, which is uh, the velocity, okay, when we're dealing with electromagnetic wave, uh, we use the term C for the V here, okay, C, which is the speed of light, all right, um, but this is generic for waves, so V times lambda, which is the wavelength, uh, uh, equals wavelength times frequency, okay, are utilized are are utilized to analyze the qualities of a wave okay so these two equations are the base equations all right we can see that the frequency is in both the equations right but there is no equation relating wavelength to energy okay so we if we have the, the wavelength of a wave okay um we can't we can't necessarily find okay in the speed right we have the wavelength of speed okay we um we can't necessarily find what the uh, what the energy is okay um, so we can just set up a quick system of equations and we can come up with an equation that relates the wavelength to the energy okay and then we'll have a equation that we can utilize for that so uh, so this is a system of equations right here uh, denoted by these brackets so solve for the F in the first equation so we'll just use this first equation we'll solve for F and by doing that, we divide both sides by the H, the Planck's constant, and then we have F equals the energy over the Planck's constant. Uh, plug the solution in, uh, to F. So we're going to plug the solution into the second equation, okay? So we're going to plug it right here. We're just going to put EH right here, okay? Just like that, we have this new equation. So now we have an equation that, that does relate E to the wavelength right but let's let's uh, let's isolate the e so we'll do just a bit of algebra we'll solve for e okay so we'll multiply by the inverse okay or um which um which this, this can be on top of this fraction okay we'll multiply by the inverse here the h and the uh lambda the wavelength all right and we get um and we get this right here okay we'll do the same on both sides one h times h or uh, h divided h over h here okay uh, becomes one this becomes one two so we just get the e isolated okay so we get the energy isolated so this is a new equation all right you may have seen this in your text okay but this is how it would be uh, derived okay you just find the one variable you plug it in to the other equation okay and then um, and then you can you know solve or, or find out what you need right um, these are some algebra questions that um, I just wrote. Um, they're meant to be slightly challenging. Okay, uh, they may be quite challenging for some in some ways. Um, so go ahead and uh, just review the rules if you need to and everything, and um, and try to solve these on your own. R really give it a good try. The uh, answers will be at the end of this lesson here, but. Um, I encourage you to especially uh, to uh, to um, try and come up with some answers. Okay, so you can write these down, try to come up with the answers. All right, um, and then you can uh, you know check yourself, and we'll discuss them at the end of the video. Okay, um, so in the in the next one, we'll talk about graphing. Okay, I kind of skipped through that quick, but graphing right there. Okay, um, and how that relates in Graphing it can be an important tool for analyzing an equation or data, okay? So we can write an equation, we can graph it, or we could just have data, just uh, points of data, okay? And we can uh, and we can graph that too. We can do a, uh, like a scatter plot where we just graph the points on the, on the uh, graph, and then we can make a, a line, okay? A, uh, like a best fit line, okay, for it, or... or uh, or we can just, if we're hand doing it, you know, we just we can just draw a line for it, and we can analyze um, the data that way. Okay, uh, it can also be used to better understand an idea. Okay, so um, so seeing a graph of um, certain values, like in video three, uh, we mentioned the emission spectrum. 
of uh, x-rays and x-rays production and everything okay and there's graphs utilized there uh, to better see things um, a graph is a visual representation of a relationship between two or more subjects okay so we so um, so we can relate two different things uh, this concept could be as simple as like a as like an as a, a number line okay um, an equation or it can or it can actually represent actual data okay uh, like it can be the number of x-rays produced at different energies okay um, and we can we can graph that down right so it's uh, two different subjects okay it's the number of x-rays is the one subject and uh, energies is the other subject okay uh, it shows what the output of one of the subjects okay is at a given value we can graph data points or an equation as we already talked about so let's just talk about the graph in general so the graph is labeled with two axes Typically, we can have a third axis where we can represent more data, like a Z axis. But for our purposes, we're going to have two axes: the X and the Y, with the uh, with the subjects we are representing. Okay, so the X is the vertical axis. So if we're representing the one value, okay, it's going to be a vertical axis. Okay, and the Y is a horizontal, which is straight up and down, which is up and down here. Okay, axis. So that's the X and Y axis. So typically, it is said that the Y value is the output. Of what the of what is plugged into the x okay so the y is like the output is what, of what's plugged into the x y is represented as f of x in mathematics so it's like the function of x okay um is the way this can be written too we typically won't write it this way but it doesn't have to be this way it can be the opposite way it can be uh you can plug in the value for y and you get x out okay it's just um it's just uh, the x-axis and the y-axis okay and, um, and how you're using them so in the equation written y equals 2x plus 1 when x is a half okay so when the x value is a half we can just plug that in we get 2 times a half which is 1 plus 1 which equals 2 um, and we can say so we can say that when when x is at a half the y is going to be a value of 2 okay so we can see how this is a relationship between just two different ideas okay if every continuous x is plugged in okay so if we plug in all the x's and plotted and connected by a line we have a graph of the we can have the graph of the equation 2x plus 1 okay and we'll see it here so the graph of the equation 2x plus 1 is represented here okay and if we took a half right here this is the x value of a half and we just went up here to the line and we see what the value is at the y at that point it's two okay so um and so that can be very useful for solving an equation sometimes um that maybe can't be solved otherwise or just visualizing things a uh, linear graph so a linear the equation 2x plus 1 is a linear equation. This is where a change in the input x will result in the output changing the same amount. Okay, it's linear. So, um, so if we go from 2 to 3, it's going to be the same change as from 3 to 3 to 4. Okay, so we so we're changing from 2 to 3. We're changing a value of 1. We're going up 1, and 3 to 4, we're going up 1. So the change is going to be the same at both of those. Um, at both of those values uh, differences in values okay because it's just one um, this is because the X is not raised any power okay um, so it's just gonna be um, so it's just gonna be a linear output okay the uh, the outputs gonna be the same as what the change in the input is okay how the X variable is being raised will determine the behavior of the graph okay so let's say that the uh, well, how it's being multiplied, I guess, would change the behavior of the graph, okay? So if it's being multiplied um, by the 2, okay, it's going to rise a lot quicker. All right, and we'll see that on the next one. The general form of a linear equation is mx plus c, okay? 
um, m is typically called the slope, which is like how quickly it rises and falls, and c is like the offset, which will be where the line crosses the y-axis. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll look at some linear graphing here. So we have two graphs that will come up, and we have uh, the graph of y equals x. So y equals x, so at every value, when x is 1, y is 1. When x is minus 1, y is minus 1, and so on and so forth. Um, the graph of y uh, times uh, times a negative 1, essentially, or negative or uh, x negative, you know, negative x, is just going to be the opposite. So when it's 1, it's negative 1. When it's 2, it's negative 2. But now when it's negative 1, it's a positive 1, okay, equals y. Um, and we see how the... Uh, how multiplying here, so from this one here, okay, we have a multiple of 5, so now it's going to be, um, no, the, it's going to rise much quicker here, okay, so when we have a 1, the answer is going to be 5, or the output is going to be 5. We say answer, but, you know, output, but the, the y value right, is going to be 5. Okay, the same here and here, and this would just keep on continuing for uh, as it goes, all right? Um, we have two different other examples, so this is kind of like the offset. So we said it's where it's going to cross the y-axis. So it crosses the y-axis at a positive 3 in this case, okay, because we're adding 3. All right. And here it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 3, okay. This would be true if we were multiplying by, this was 5x plus 3, okay. It would be the same. So we have an example here. So we have negative 3, okay, so it's going to be a negative trend here. Um, uh, negative 2. So it still crosses the y-axis at negative 2, even though the slope is much greater, even though it's going down much greater. Right? Exponential graphing, the equation x to the second plus 1 is an exponential graph. This is where the change in the input x will result in changing the output by the power of the input. Okay, so the input would be like, like the x, okay, and, uh, and the typical graphing form, right? So we input a uh, value into x is going to change by the power, okay, that the x is being raised to, in this case, to the second. Um, this will change depending on the power that the x is raised to. An even power will have a parabolic shape, okay, which we'll see like this. And, and, and an odd will have a wave-like shape, okay, so it'll, it'll go up and down like this, okay, and we can, uh, we can manipulate this in different ways. We'll see the greater the even power, the quicker it will rise. All right, which makes sense, you know, it's the output's going to be a larger value when this is raised uh, to a larger value, right? And then the flight of the bottom is going to be, okay. uh, the greater the odd power, the more pronounced the peaks of the curve, and the quicker it climbs after that. The general form of the equation is um, ax to power equals bx to power minus 1, and then so on and so forth until we get so there's no value of powers here, okay, and these don't have to have um, any kind of value, okay, so it could just be uh, 2 times 2x two uh, to the third, and that could be it, okay, that's an exponential graph right there, okay, none of these other ones actually have to have value, and then eventually there's a c, just a plus a constant, okay. Um, a is the multiplying fa factor, which will cause the graph to be steeper, okay, b is the multiplying is the multiplier and will of the x okay or um, the next power the x is being raised to and will change the offset of the graph c is the constant and will be where the nexus or where like the uh, the center point of the graph will be located okay and we'll, and we'll look at this a bit so this is the basic uh, y to the second power okay and that's parabolic and this is y to the third power okay and it looks like this okay um, it has this kind of wave-like shape, okay, and you see there's like a flatness here, okay, there's really no flatness here, okay, but as we raise this, this is going to become flatter, okay, all the way out to the 1 and negative 1, and we'll see the exponential graphing, okay, so we have, from the parabolic, we have um, x to the 4th, okay, we see how it's really flat here, and then it, and then it goes up, and we see how the x to the 6th goes up much steeper, Okay, look at this scale here. Okay, now this is uh, 22 and somewhat beyond on the y scale. Okay, so it's it's uh, rising very very quickly on these, of course. Um, 
and then the graph of y equals 3 x to the second. Okay, now this y scale changed again, so make a note of that. Um, <clears throat> when we multiply by 3 here, it rises like this. When we multiply by 6, okay, it goes like this. Okay, so this doesn't become flatter here, okay, because to the second. Um, but if it was uh, to the sixth or the fourth or whatever, this would be slightly flattened here. Okay, so that's just uh, some little tidbits about exponential graphing here. Okay, and we said that the that the constant here is kind of like the offset where the nexus is. So there's a plus two, so it's gonna uh, be plus two here. Okay, and it's negative two, so it's gonna be negative two here. Um, the graph um, when it's negative x. Okay, to the second now the uh, parabola points down, okay, and we have a plus 4, so the right there is the plus 4 is is uh, going to be where it crosses, all right, and these basic equations, okay, we can add more complexity to it, of course, right, and we can add uh, this plus 2x, okay, and it kind of shifts everything over here where it's more, um, where it's more like over here, and this is more like the center point of it, okay, um, and then if we Negative the two x, you know, kind of, it kind of does this to it and all this. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff we can do, and then we can just take this one here, right? And we just add the three. Now we just shift this up three. So all we're doing is just shifting this up three. So you can kind of see how this just kind of shifts up and down. Okay, the graphs. Um, now, as we said, when it's to an odd power, okay, the graph isn't going to look the same as when it's to even powers, okay, so this is x to the 5, so x to the 5, it's pretty flat here, it rises really quick, and look at the y scale again, okay, and then you see it's very flat here when it's x to the 11, and it rises very quickly, okay, once it gets uh, past 1, okay, because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, it's just it's just always going to stay one so it's never going to be more until this x value gets greater than one okay that's the reason for the flatness on both of them all right um so this is going to be one 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 and we get one one decimal or something one decimal all the way up to the two you know and two to the fifth all right it's going to be 32 okay so that's up there pretty good all right to the 11th i do not know what i well i do know it's uh uh, to the two to the eleventh, it's going to be two thousand forty-eight. Okay, so compared to thirty-two, right? If this was a two. Uh, okay, if the x was a two, all right? The x was a two, so it's going to be all the way up to two thousand forty-eight. So we we'll see how quickly that rises. All right, so um, I think we got that here. So off the basic graph of uh, with this, just x to the third, x to the third, we can see how it rises. Okay. How it rises much more quick here. All right, it's on even to the two, and it's already past the 30, 33 or off the graph. All right, and here it goes much more slow. Okay, so it makes sense. You know, the the y is going to be a larger value when we're multiplying more here. Um, with these, you know, we can manipulate them in different ways, right? Just like we add the five, it just changes. Okay, so it just shifts it up five. Uh, we make a negative two. We just shift it down uh, to the negative. Um, these two are the same scales here um, as all the other ones, and then when it's negative, it's going to flip it. Okay, so it's going to flip all the values. It's kind of like it flipped the par parabola, right? But it just it kind of flips across here, you know, is how it visually looks, right? Okay, so that's to the negative. Um, and then we can do funky stuff again, you know, we can do x to the third, and then we can have a to the second value, okay? We can make this negative, and this really kind of elongates here, all right? If we... Um, manipulate these enough you can see we start to get this little curve coming out where it kind of goes up and it kind of comes back down it kind of flattens out here right um but if we really make these values right uh larger and we do a funky thing we can get this kind of wave graph here okay um so um so we can really change you know the output by uh, by what the equations are of course um, the equation y to the log of x is a logarithmic equation, as we learned, right? This is where the change in the output x will result in the output changing by the log of the input. 
this will change depending on the base of the log. The standard base of the log, as we learned, is 10. However, it can be any value. The actual log, like uh, the base of E, which is Euler's number, um, is 2 times uh, 2.72. I don't know if that's supposed to be capitalized in this case, even though it is his name. There's an interesting thing, but I think it, I think it's okay. But the the greater the base, the flatter the curve will be. Okay, so the greater the base that the the base number here is the flatter the curve will be so the base of 10 is going to be flatter than the the base of e right because 10 is a bigger number than this 2.7 um logarithmic is also useful as a scale for when analyzing data events or natural phenomenon okay as we mentioned before logarithmic comes up in all these things it comes up in radiology too the general form of a log equation is log x to the y and the base is assumed that it's 10 in this and this is how it looks okay so the log in uh in this form here okay and i even wrote a base 10 here just to really clarify is never gonna it's never gonna be um the the x can never be negative so this can never be negative here okay um there's a reason for that which is uh beyond the scope of uh of, of these lessons all right, so we see log graphing here, all right? So um, this is the log of base 10 to the x, which is the standard graph. And just to show the difference here, this is log to the base e, which can be written like this too, the natural log. Okay, and we see how it's not quite as flat, right? It curves up a lot more, all right? Um, so, um, so the log of 10, all right? So if we remember the log rule, this would be like, what do we need to raise okay so this output would be what what do we need to raise this to all right to get um to get this output right so if we have 10 to 10 all right so if we raise 10 to the power of 1 we get 10 okay if we raise it should be this way 10 to the power of 1 we get 10 okay so 10 uh, so the log of 10 at the value of 10 the output's 1 Okay. Um, and this is uh, what it looks on the same scale. So this scale, if you notice, change is 2.7 or 2.5. It goes up to 2.5. This one goes up to 2.1. So the natural log on the same scale here as this one. Okay. It looks like this. Whoop. That's not well visualized though, right? So so we use this scale here. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is how much quickly it rises, okay, and how much less flat it is, okay, when the base is changed. Um, if we just multiply it by 3, we're just doing the same thing, okay, and it's 3. So in, when this is 10, instead of it being 1, now it's going to be 3. We'll continue with our logarithmic graphing, okay, and we can add 1, correct, so we can add 1 um, here. All right, it's just going to shift everything up one. We can subtract one. It's going to shift everything down one. We can do it the negative log, okay? And we just flip all the values, right? And we note that the log still isn't ever, there's never never a, a, a negative x, okay, that can be plugged in here. Right? I suppose um, the one way maybe if this log if it was this log negative x, uh, you know, like negative x, and then we plug negative, then it would just become a positive. Negative times negative is positive. Um, and then possibly that, all right? Um, but for our purposes, right, we can do all kinds of funky stuff here, right? So we have log, um, and we can raise the whole thing to the second power, okay? And we get this kind of log parabolic thing kind of going on here, right? Um, oh, here we go. See, we're adding two to this, so so we just off shift. Okay, so this this is a, a good point here. So we just off shift instead of zero being the point it can never go to. Now negative two is a point it can never cross. Okay, and it will continue forever here and never cross this point. Um, we can inverse the log, so we do one over. So we're taking uh, the normal log graph. Okay. And we're flipping it around here, okay? So we get this kind of shape, okay? Where it's going to get closer and closer forever to the, uh, 
to the zero y value, just like it gets closer and closer forever to the zero uh, x value on the typical graph, right? Which is which would be like this, okay? We're we're inversing it, so now it's going to be like in this fashion, okay? Um, so you notice all kinds of funky things, right? And that's how um, doing different things kind of manipulates those graphs, okay? So we can talk about logarithmic scale. Okay, so um, on these two, we can just have a single scale where this one scale is logarithmic, okay, where this uh, and this uh, graph that I have here, okay, it's the negative log, okay, of this, all right, this would be like the output, okay, and um, the value output. Now, this is a double log graph. Here, okay, and we see how these values log log log. Okay, so both of these are log, um, and um, and the way that this equation works out, right? This is the best way to to show this data. Okay, so the thing to keep in mind is that from here to here is ten. Okay, from here to here is a hundred. So if we use the same scale here from here to here, okay, we would um, we would have to have the next point would be. Uh, this and then nine more of this length out this way, okay, right? And that's not well visualized in, in the details, especially in this area here, okay, would be lost, right? This is, becomes a, li a linear line, but um, if there was details in here, it would be completely lost, right? So sometimes this is the best way. So when you're uh, looking at the graphs and your text, and you're going through things and everything, um, looking at the scale, and, and um, often there will be a note okay um about it but um n noting the scale is a good point okay to make all right it may be a single log okay just this or maybe double log all right scale where both the scales of the graph are in log um we'll talk about the root and the graphing so the root the basic equation is this y equals uh, the square root of x okay it's where the change in the x will result in the output changing by the square root of the input. This will change depending on the square root taken, okay? So the standard square root, uh, however, it can be any value. So the standard square root like this, okay, is the same as x to the one half. All right, so this is something that uh, you may not uh, be aware of, or maybe um, you learned it at one point and you just kind of forgot. So... Um, the square root of x equals x to the one half. Um, the greater the root, the flatter the curve will be. So this um, x to the one half can be manipulated just in the ways that we uh, learned before the exponential rules, right? We can, if we're supposed to the second, we can multiply and it goes away, okay, and all this other stuff, right? Um, the greater the root, the flatter the curve will be. Um, so this is true with like x to the uh, the third, the third root, okay? equals this, the fourth root equals that, etc. So also, uh, like, we can have, you know, 1.5 to, to the root of 1.5. There's nothing that says that it can't be this in this way, okay? It would equal this. If we want to make it a, a value that, you know, maybe it's more understandable, we can just multiply both by 2, okay? And we get the both the, uh, the numerator and denominator here by 2, and we get this expression, okay? And... Um, what happens here is this 1 stays with the x, okay, so the 1 kind of stays with the x, and the 2 goes with the square root, so here the 2 is going to stay with the x, and the 3 is going to go to the square root, okay, so this is uh, how root, roots work and some rules of, of uh, roots, okay. Uh, the general form of, the, of a, um, this should be root equation, is uh, y equals um, the square root of x, I just love the logarithmic stuff so much, I guess, right? Um, so this is what it basically looks like. So it's kind of logarithmic, right? But if we put both of these together, um, um, they would, they, 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 they wouldn't match up, right? Okay, and just, you can just see this basic, right, thing, how it doesn't match up. So the 10 was 1, here it's, uh, you know, 3, right, like 3.1. Uh, something I think okay so let's just look at some root graphing here all right so um, as we said the greater the greater the value of the root that we're taking so the greater this like root value here 
if we're taking the flatter the curve is going to be, right? So this rises more quickly. Okay, this y value is going to be a greater value. And on this one, it's going to be a lesser value when it's to the sixth. Right? And these are what the graphs look like. Uh, when we multiply by 2, we're doing the same thing, right? We're just taking all these and we're just multiplying them by 2. Um, so, um, the same as before, when we, multi when we add a constant or we subtract a constant, we're just shifting up and down, okay? So we're just shifting the, the basic graph up by one, we're just shifting down by one. Um, when we do the negative, okay, we're just flipping across this axis, essentially, uh, the original graph, all right? So we get the same thing, so the 10, instead of being the positive one, uh, three, about three, now it's the negative three. Um, and then this is what the graph of this looks like here, that equation that we worked with before, which will be the third root of x to the second is the way this, the third root of x to the second is the way this would be said, okay? And it would look like this, right? This x to the second is making this number bigger at an exponential rate, right, to the second power. But this square root is also making it, so it has the shape of it, but it's rising quite quickly if we look at this scale, right? Um, and we can just do, you know, some funky stuff here, right, like always. Um, we can talk about threshold graph, okay? This comes up in, like, uh, interactions, uh, radio bio, things like that, uh, when we're talking about um, electronics and things. So a threshold graph is a graph that um, that is typical, is typically level, or it just kind of stays at roughly a certain value until a certain point, okay, to a certain value, and then there's a sudden change occurs, okay, and that's like a threshold graph. Um, we can see an example of it here, okay, so this is uh, all these right here, whatever they're measuring here, right, uh, all these values here, they stay uh, roughly one, right, even though we went from zero to point to point two to the point four to the point six, all right, we've increased greatly. Now just increasing from the point six to the point eight, right? And all these, um, all these right here, point six is about here, okay? They sharply decline, okay? With the yellow and the point eight is here. So this was one, and now it's suddenly point two. So there's just a fall off that occurs here, right? And it can be done this way too, all right? So the rate at which this climbs, okay, so this climbs at, you know, 0 0.5 rate, so this, uh, so this threshold happens kind of slowly, okay, and this would be like in, uh, H&D curves, okay, which may come up when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about, like, output of the, of the, uh, detector, okay, um, and it can also, uh, it comes up in electronics a lot, especially this type of thing, okay, um, where, where we change the input a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and we don't want it to change, okay? Or a change doesn't occur until we just rise it slightly. So we're just a slight rise, boom, now there's a big change, okay? And it can go from zero, roughly zero, all the way up to one, okay? And just a slight change of uh, the input. So that's like a threshold graph, right? We'll uh, go ahead and we'll talk about the algebra answers, okay? Um, like I said, I encourage you all to work those. If you're at this point you haven't worked them yet, just pause the video here. You know, hopefully you wrote them down or you can just go back and look at them and, um, and you know, go ahead and give them a good try, all right? And we'll see what the answers are. So the first one was uh, this 2x plus 15 to the second power equals 361, find x. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, we'll just take the square root of both sides, right? So we learned that the square root is to the power of one half, right? So when we do the power of one half, when we learn that if a power is raised to a power, we can multiply them. So we multiply the one half times the two. And we get 2 over 2, and 2 over 2 is just 1, and anything raised to the 1 is just itself, okay? So this undoes this here, okay? Um, and we and we do the the 3, the operation on the 361, 2. The square root of 361, surprisingly, is 19, okay? Um, and then on both sides, we need to subtract 15 from both sides, which we do here. We subtract 15 on both sides, all right? We get uh, 4. For the answer and we get uh, 2x okay this 15 goes away we divide 2 by both sides we get x equals 2 if we put 2 back in here 
we should get 361. Um, on this one, we have 2 to the power of x, and 2 to the power of x equals 256. So the first thing I would think is uh, maybe we can combine these two, right? It's got the same base. I think so. Yep, okay. So exponential rule. So we'll do that, and we combine these two. This is just x plus x. x plus x is the same as uh, 2 times x. x plus x plus x is the same as 3 times x. Okay. Um, so the exponential rule, so now we get this expression here, and we keep the 256. We can use the log rule that we learned before. Okay, we get the 256 goes here, the power becomes the 2, the answer becomes 2x. Okay. Um, to solve, we just plug this in. We can plug it into the calculator like this, as we learned before, right? And we get the answer of 8. So now we have 8 equals 2 to the x. You can divide both sides by 2. Very simple, and now we have 4. So x equals 4. So if we put a 4 here and a 4 here, we'll uh, get the answer 256. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll look at the next equation here. All right. Um, so we'll look at this equation and how to solve it. So this one's a little more complicated because we have an exponential, okay, here, and we also have uh, the variable that we're trying to find here, right? So I think the first thing we should do is maybe we should just simplify this part of it. Okay, and that's what we'll do. We'll uh, distribute the 15. So this is like multiplying 15 times in, and then 15 times negative 6, and that's 90, negative 90. Okay. Um, then we'll use exponential rules. Okay, will we just bring these down? Okay, will we just bring the 2 right here? And um, we can pull this out. Okay, I mean, we can keep this m to the second, so we can pull this out as like a fourth. All right, so we have a fourth m to the second plus 15m minus 90 equals 85, and then we're going to subtract 85 from both sides. Okay, so we subtract 85, we get zero on this side, and now we have this expression. So this expression is um, the form of like what um, a polynomial, right? Which is like uh, what uh, could uh, we'll use the quadratic equation for this, okay? And this is you know getting kind of involved, but um, the point of this is to be slight, slightly challenging, right? So the quadratic equation is going to be uh, m. The variable that we're looking for in here, okay, um, is going to equal this expression, okay. So the b is this coefficient right here, 15, all right. The a is this coefficient, a fourth. Well, because it's a fraction, it's still a value, okay, a fourth. If there was nothing here, it would just be 1, okay, it would just be 1. But when we're multiplying it, it doesn't change here, right. But if it was a 1 here, we would have to put a 1 here to keep it congruent. Uh, and this is going to be negative uh, 175. All right, so we plug this in, okay, we plug this all in here, we got the plus and minus here too, right? Um, and the answer is going to be m equals negative 70 uh, the one way and uh, 10 the other way, okay, with the positive and negative here, right? Um, so if we plug either one of those values in to here, okay, we get this, okay? There's not always valid answers necessarily with this, okay? If... Um, if this is larger, okay, and then we have a negative square root we're taking, okay, we get like imaginary numbers and stuff. We don't need to go that far into it. That's beyond the scope of, uh, of uh, what we need to learn here. Um, but let's look at a graph. So if we graph this here, okay, we're just graphing this right here, right? And that's this blue line, all right? And we know it's going to be parabolic because it's to the second power. Okay, and it's gonna have, and these things are gonna throw it off different ways, right? So it's uh, so it's graphed like this, right? And this is a very large scale here, but if we take a line at the y equals 85, okay, we treat this value at what it equals as 85, and we just draw a line straight across here, just like this right here, right? This is uh, the value of 85. That's 500 up there, right? Um, and then we we take the points where it crosses. If we look. This right here, if we look at this right here, this is 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. That's 10 right there, and that's one of the answers. The other answer is 70, okay? And that's where it crosses right here. So graphing something can be useful for finding the answers, right? So if you're able just to graph this, you know, and you draw the line straight there, 
where it crosses boom boom is the answer if it wasn't parabolic it only crossed once okay like the thing only crossed once and it crossed right there at the 50. the answer to, to your variable to, the, your, to what you're looking for is probably going to be 50 okay um so 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 this can be a useful tool all right and sometimes um graphing calculators and stuff when it's really complicated ones that can solve equations and stuff they it's it's kind of graphing in the background and maybe doing different things all right but uh graphing is sometimes the only way to solve a complicated uh equation okay we'll just continue we'll just look at a couple the, the other answers here so this equation here it looks very intimidating at first right um we realize that this is only just values okay so this is probably where we need to start just solving this right you don't always need to attack it with dividing things out and doing all this stuff. Sometimes just solving a part of it is the best way to go. So we'll, we will we'll solve and we'll simplify. All right. So um, we know the rule here is the same as uh, when it's negative. Okay. When it's uh, in the denominator, I mean. Okay. Uh, uh, the 10, like a power here or anything is the same as uh, the opposite sign okay negative it's a negative sign here so positive in in the uh numerator okay so that can become and then we can just add them together when we have the same base so 10 to the 9 okay and then we got to keep this fraction here these two values here all right um and then we keep all the rest of the equation but divide the leading expression okay so we'll just divide this out all right we, we don't need this expression anymore okay we'll divide it out over here um you can use your rules here where you if you multiply by the inverse and everything okay but and uh this will be the negative so this would just become 10 and all this right but the, it becomes 200 all right um now it's much simpler okay so this look this looks very like kind of kind of complicated intimidating but when we just use you know some basic steps and some things that you know and uh sometimes if you start going about it it doesn't always work out the way you hope and stuff so you kind of maybe you got to start over from the beginning but uh when we do it this way it can become a very uh very uh much easier to work with expression right so we just divide by two divide by two we get this expression here equals 100 then we subtract three from both sides subtract three from this side right and we got x equals 97. all right so with all this, all these uh, scientific notations and divisions and all this going on here, uh, x equals 97. Okay. Um, we'll look at the last two. The next one was this one. So this one's uh, what makes it slightly more difficult is that uh, what we're looking for i is in the denominator. Okay. So this is slightly more different, but not much. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get rid of this one. Just add this one, right? We're trying to isolate this variable, so let's get rid of this one. Add one to this side, add one to that side. We do that. Uh, the fraction rule, we can find common, right? This would just be uh, 44 over 44. Okay. When we add, it's going to be 44. We just add 44 here. It equals 116 over 44. Okay. So we get this. Now we just multiply both sides by the i to the second okay to get out of that denominator we don't we don't like things in the denominator typically okay it looks but it's easier to work with when this is being multiplied like this 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 becomes this this becomes that now we can just divide because we want to get the i squared by itself right we can just divide okay this out all right we just divide this this will equal 4.0064 really close to four Okay, at this point, we could probably just act like it's a 4, depending on how exact we need to be here. Okay, um, and we get i to, the, i to the second. We do the square root function. Okay, just like before, we square root, square root. And we get 2.001 equals i, right? Uh, so, typically, right, if we're doing ABCD kind of answer or something, you know, it's probably going to be 2. It's probably going to be the answer, right? Because it's the uh, 1,000th place becomes typically will become insignificant but maybe significant depending on what you're doing so we round so it's two equals i uh, is that answer now we have the system of equations and this will be the last one we'll go over um so the system of equations uh we just need to find the answer to one variable 
okay? Um, and it could be, if there was another one, it could be um, the answer of one variable, and there could be, as it relates to other variables, right? If there's, an, if there's another equation here. Um, so this one, it's very easy to work with, it looks like, right? It's just a basic um, multiplication here. So we use the second equation to solve for y. Okay, so we'll just do, you know, kind of finding the easiest thing to do is a way to do divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 7. So we'll plug 7 for y in the first equation, okay? So we'll just plug that in the first equation. Can't plug it back in here, that's not doing anything. We need to plug it back in the first equation. Um, so 2x minus 5 times 7, okay, um, equals 15. So we're just, we're just plugging it in this equation, okay? That's where this came from. Solve for the x. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and we'll just do the basic steps. This is 35 here, right? Uh, it's negative 35, so we'll add 35. We'll add 35. We get 2x equals 50. This is looks like it's going to work out pretty conveniently. x equals 25. Okay. So now we know what the y equaled. Okay. y equaled 7. x equals 25. Therefore, y equals 7, x equals 25 here. Okay, if we plugged it in here, or we just put that back in there, we know it's going to equal 21, right? And we get the, the correct answers, okay? Um, so that concludes this lesson. I hope that you uh, find this information useful as you progress through your radiologic studies. Um, in the next video, uh, which should be uh, labeled uh, the third video, uh, the fourth video overall, but the third lesson. Okay, this is like a supplement lesson. Um, in the next video, we will discuss technique intro, the emission spectrum, and beam propagation. All right.